Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Lenas. You are now watching More Than 20 Days to Jam, a series containing more than 20 episodes which covers all the topics in Jam syllabus. Each episode comprises detailed class, questions, and homework. The questions and homework are from the Flash Lenas Jam application. This makes the app a requirement for this class. Visit Google Play Store or flashlearners.com to get the app. Do you have trust issues? Reach me on any of my social handles for activation guide or inquiries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. This is episode number 21 of the 120 Days to Jump Chemistry with Flash Isaac. Ladies and gentlemen, I present chemical bonding. Some of the things I wrote on the board are not actually for you to see them. They are for me to maintain details so that I don't miss anything. Bonding is two or more molecules coming together to form a union, combining of molecules. If you are saying let us bond, let us come together. Marriage is bonding between a man and a woman. Meta and non meta coming together to form a strong bond. Chemical bonding is divided into intramolecular bonds and intermolecular bonds. Intra and inter. Intramolecular bonds are bonds or they are forces within molecules. Within molecules. And intermolecular bonds are forces between molecules. Examples of intramolecular bonds are ionic bond or electrovalent bond, covalent bond and metallic bonds. For intermolecular bonds, we have hydrogen bonds, Van der Waal forces and London forces. Van der Waal forces are like the weakest forces you can see. They are very weak forces. Now, what is an electrovalent bond or ionic bond? Electrovalent bond is a bond whereby we have element A and we have element B. Element A has three electrons in the outermost shape. Element B needs three electrons in the outermost shape. So if electron A donates the electron, to electron B, electron A becomes positively charged, if that is ion, electron B becomes negatively charged, which is also ion, negative ion. So therefore, what are the elements that donate electrons and what are the elements that receive electrons? Metals ionize by electron loss. When metal lose electron, you form ion and positive ion. Non-metals, they ionize by electron gain. They gain electron to be negatively charged, which means ionic or electrovalent bonds are bonded between metals and non-metals, and they have to do with transfer of valence electrons leading to ions formation. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shape. Let's look at one or two things about electrovalent bonds. One, they are between atoms or molecules with large electronegativity difference. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. So if electronegativity difference is greater than 1.5 between the atoms, then ionic bonding can take place. Similarly, for covalent bonding, they are between for atoms with lower or zero electronegativity difference, less than 1.5 or even zero. Electrovalent compounds are solid at room temperature. So they are usually solid. So most solid compounds, they have electrovalent bonding. And electrovalent compounds, they dissolve in water to form ions. Two, they dissolve in polar solvents, generally. Water is a polar solvent. Ethanol is a polar solvent. And ammonia is a polar solvent. Which means electrovalent compounds will dissolve in these Solvents. What is polarity? Or one is a molecule said to be polar. 
Kola molecules are molecules where there is unequal sharing of electron. That will lead to distortion of the charge. Any molecule where you see there is a charge, positive charge or negative charge is polar. But for non polar, there is no charge at all because there is equal sharing of electrons between component atoms. Examples of polar molecules are water, trichloromethane, and ethanol. These guys are polar. Then kerosene, benzene, now uh, ether, they are non polar. Since electrovalent compounds dissolve in polar solvents, it means they don't dissolve in non polar solvents like benzene or ether or kerosene. They are used as electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances or um, compounds that conduct electricity when they are in molten state or when they are in solution. They dissolve to conduct. They don't conduct in their solid state like we have in metals, copper, silver. Examples of electrovalent compounds are magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, magnesium oxide, sodium sulfide, sodium bromide, calcium fluoride, and sodium chloride. You see, they are basically between metals and non-metals. The uh, group 1, group 2, and group 7. That is basically it. And electrovalent compounds, they have high melting point and high boiling point. This is because of the great strength between them. High melting point and high boiling point. Now, let's use this opportunity to compare electronic, electrovalent, and covalent bond. We said that electrovalent bond or electrovalent compounds, they dissolve in polar solvents. Covalent compounds generally do not dissolve in polar solvents. They don't dissolve in water, they don't dissolve in ethanol and ammonia. But they dissolve in non polar solvents. So they can dissolve in kerosene, benzene, ether, which means they are reverse of electrovalent or ionic compounds. Covalent compounds involve sharing of electrons. This sharing can be equal or unequal. If electrons are shared equally, we say that that is ordinary covalent bonding. As found in ammonia, methane, water, chlorine molecule, and hydrogen molecule, there is equal sharing of electrons. For hydrogen molecule, one, one, they come together to share the electron. For water, there is equal sharing of electron. Why for electronegative, electrovalent bonding, if this has one electron, the other will share, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, when the atom will share, there is inner and inner. If this donates to, to here, this becomes plus, this becomes minus. So donating of electron, electrovalent, but sharing is covalent. In the process of sharing, the sharing may be unequal. So when there is unequal sharing of electron, that is coordinate covalent bonding or dative bonding. Coordinate covalent bonding or dative bonding. As seen is Ag NH32. Complex ammonia ion, like ammonia receiver and ammonia compound. Copper Cu NH42. And how to know coordinate covalent bond is you see, there is a lone pair and it's represented by arrow. Why ordinary covalent bond? There is dash, dash between the compounds. But for coordinates, you see arrow pointing at one to show that that is a lone pair. Lone pair is a free electron that is not shared in the molecule. Metallic bonds are bonds or forces that keep metals together in crystal lattice. So, forces that keep metals together in crystal lattice are metallic bonds and all metals they possess metallic bonds that is the force they use to hold their body <laughs> then hydrogen bond under intermolecular bonds hydrogen bond is a bond that usually exists between a hydrogen molecule and highly electronegative atom in another molecule so if you see hydrogen chloride hydrogen fluoride uh, ethanol and uh, ethanoic acid they possess hydrogen bond because hydrogen bond is hydrogen plus highly electronegative atom 
in another molecule. Now, a feature of hydrogen bond, when hydrogen bond occurs, or when there is a when hydrogen is conveniently bonded with another atom or molecule, you see increase in boiling point, increase in melting point, and increase in solubility. So you may be asked, why are ethanols and ethanoic acid? Why do they possess high boiling point? Despite the fact that they are covalent compounds, because generally covalent compounds have or organic compounds have low melting point and boiling point. But ethanol and ethanoic acid, they are organic compounds, but they still have high boiling point. This is as a result of hydrogen bonding between their molecule. As London forces, they are dipole dipole attraction, so they occur between mo uh, polar unsymmetric molecules. You can see that inside HCl and inside water to an extent, they are very weak forces. Ladies and gentlemen, chemical bonding. That is everything you should know. With this, we come to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we will look at nuclear chemistry, radioactivity. That is where we see that atoms can actually be destroyed. Then we see that not only chemical reactions occur, reactions can occur in the nucleus then in the next two episodes next three we're looking at questions so what you should do is get the flash jam application after every episode answer questions on your own you have the option to go to your subject and pick the particular topic you want questions to come you can choose chemical bonding you see questions on that chemical bonding and in the study option you can in the option you can choose study mode in study mode, after every question, you can click on show, you will see the answer, you are practicing. After you practice, you can begin to choose the other exam modes to test yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, see you in the next episode.